Hi guys and welcome to this wintry gouache painting tutorial. If you're new around here, hi my name is Anna and today I'll walk through these two mini landscape paintings with you that are great for a quick and easy gouache painting session. I'm using this watercolor sketchbook but absolutely any thicker paper would work for this purpose and then I'll use my Holbein artist gouache paints. I'll quickly show you all the colors we'll be using today, but don't worry if you don't own the exact same colors as I do. You could totally replace the blue, red and green tones with whatever shades you have at home. We'll mainly use the blue tones today and mix some white and black with them. And for all the rest of the colors, you only need a tiny, tiny amount. But now let's finally get started. If you feel more comfortable starting with some initial sketches with a pencil, you could definitely do that. But I didn't bother with them today. The only thing I marked for myself was the place for the horizon line. But otherwise we are pretty much improvising as we're going. The first painting today will have a darker night sky, so we are starting by mixing this dark grayish blue tone for it. You get that grayish tint to your colors by mixing a little bit of white and black with the rest of the colors. And then I just loaded up this flat brush with the paint and started to swipe it to the sky. I wanted the top part of the sky to be the darkest and then we are creating a gradient effect as we are reaching towards the lower part of the sky. Creating a smooth gradient effect is definitely one of the more challenging things to do with gouache in my opinion, but luckily this painting doesn't require the sky to be completely even. We'll later add some stars and other white smudges to the sky, so after that all the initial brush strokes will appear much less noticeable. Then I decided to add this small color accent to the sky, which is completely optional, but I mixed this very light dusty pink color and added it to the lowest part in the horizon. I started by mixing quite a lot of water to this color, so it will appear quite translucent in the beginning, which will help us blend this tone to the blue colors, and then you can slowly start to add more intensity to the lowest point as we are moving forward. I also started to create these white smudges kind of to the center part of the sky and this will create this sort of milky way light effect. It will look a little bit weird for now but I think adding these stars on top will really change the whole look of this sky. So try not to be too critical about your painting in this point, it will all come together in the end. Then to help with the blending here, something I like to do is to wipe the brush I'm using a little bit and then smooth out any uneven areas with only a tiny bit of water instead of adding new layers of paint all the time. But in general, I think blending is definitely something that you'll slowly get better with consistent practice and there's really no one right way to do it. So just keep experimenting and try to find a method that you feel the most comfortable with. But now that we have this somewhat smooth gradient effect for the sky with the white details in the center, we can finally start to add the stars on top. I usually always use the same method to add stars, so what I like to do is to take a small brush, then dip it in white paint and then tap the brush over the painting with something else. This will cause the white paint to splatter all over, which gives a very natural star effect. 
but I still usually like to go over everything in the end and add some final stars by hand. So now we are officially done with the upper part of the painting and it's time to move on to the crowned part. I started this by adding this solid color foundation here and I went with this slightly lighter grayish tone blue. The small peak here will be our mountain, which will be the lightest part in this painting, so I mixed a little bit lighter background color for it as well. But then after the background has dried, I started to add some shadows and hills to the crown using a slightly darker and lighter tones than the initial layer here. This will also look a little bit weird in this point, but adding some trees will help to shape the crown and add the needed dimensions for it. So for the trees, I used a tiny bit of the green color in my palette and mixed it with the black and Prussian blue color we've been using this far. Then I started with these super tiny trees kind of in the horizon and slowly we'll start adding some bigger trees to the front as well. I went with these pretty standard evergreen shapes and using pretty much the smallest brush you own will definitely make it easier to add these tiny strokes to the branches. I think after the trees are in place, it's much easier to add some final shadows and details to the crown. So I added some shadows, especially under the trees here, and also added some darker and lighter smudges to the mountain and to the crown overall. And then lastly, as another optional step, I decided to add some snow on top of the evergreen branches with a white paint. So that's it for this first painting today. I think this is definitely the more challenging one out of these two. So if you feel like this was a little bit too difficult for you, I think you might prefer trying out this next one first. So the second painting will be overall much lighter. And this time I actually started by adding this very light grayish blue to the whole painting area. But then right away, we are taking a little bit more white paint and swiping it to the lower part, maybe around the lower third here, to make this area even lighter than the top sky part of the painting. Next, we'll add kind of similar color detail in this painting as we did in the first one. So I mixed this light pink color once again, and this will be the shade in the lowest part of the sky. You might notice I left this small gap between the pink color and the lighter crown part, just because this will be covered soon with a darker stripe, which will represent a forest further away, so it was just a little bit unnecessary to add the color right there. But again, blending the pink color to the initial sky tones might feel a little bit difficult, but just working patiently with this step and switching between these two colors will eventually help you create a smooth gradient. You can also take a little bit white color kind of in between these two. And I actually decided to take these white smudges even higher, kind of as we did in the first one, because I felt like this painting was a little bit too plain and simple otherwise. Again, I started with a little bit more water in the white paint so that it blends together with the blue color a little bit easier, but then gradually you can start to use more paint and less water to intensify these misty clouds. 
But after the sky part is done, we can move on to paint some trees again. So as I mentioned earlier, I started with this dark stripe here in the middle and then added some evergreen details to it with a smaller brush. You could of course paint all these trees individually, but I was a little bit too lazy to do that. But after that, we'll also add a few of these bigger, lonely trees that are standing on this snowy field. This time I tried to go for more of a pine tree shape. So these trees will mainly have branches in the top parts and the lower parts of the trunk will be bare. Again, using a small brush will definitely help you out. And you can also play around with the sizes and shapes of these trees. They definitely don't all have to have the same shape. So in this point, even though this was supposed to be very easy and quick painting, it was still a little bit too minimal for my liking. So I tried to add some final touches to it, like adding some shadows to the crown and then these white dots to the sky to resemble maybe some stars or snowflakes. In the end, I also decided to add some slight color variation to the crown. So I added some lines with white and a little bit darker gray tones. And of course, at home, you could always go for even more of these bigger trees as I did today. But I decided that after all those small final fixes, I was finally done with this second painting. I really hope you enjoyed this quick wash tutorial and maybe got some inspiration for your future paintings and if you like the style of this tutorial and would like to see even more of them from me every month i do have a patreon where i share an extra tutorial every month with some other extra benefits as well so link to that is in the description but i think that's it for this time thank you so much for watching i hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are and see you in my next one um, bye bye.